Hi guys, today we are going to talk about our final topic when it comes to Judaism. So, so far we have learned about the early leaders of Judaism, Abraham, Moses, David, and Solomon, and how they created Judaism and established it in the ancient world. And then we studied the beliefs and some of the practices of Judaism. And yesterday we studied the Jewish diaspora, which was the events leading up to the Jewish people being spread out around the world and not having a, a homeland for many, many years up until World War II. So um, this was a long time, um, thousands of years, that the Jewish people lived in communities around the world that did not necessarily support or practice the Jewish faith. And it's pretty incredible that they were able to survive all those years and that the religion still exists today and that they've even regained a homeland um, to call their own. So let's talk about a few things that they put in place in order to be able to survive because some of these practices have carried over into other religions such as Islam and Christianity. First of all, the Jewish people established a place where they could gather to worship. Um, the building that they worship in is called a synagogue. And by creating these, it gave people a place to come together and practice their faith as a group and create a sense of community, no matter if they were living in Europe or North America or the Middle East. Um, this works a lot like churches do for people who practice the Christian faith. And in fact, Christians sort of picked up on this idea from the Jewish people. Another thing that the Jewish people developed was a religious service. So they come together, their holy day is from Friday night through Saturday evening. And during this time, they are not supposed to work. Um, they are supposed to dedicate themselves to studying and thinking about their religion. Uh, part of that is they've developed services where they come together and leaders known as rabbis read from the Torah and the Talmud and other parts of the Hebrew Bible. Um, they pray together. This becomes a part, an important part of a Jewish person's um, daily life and making religion part of daily life is part of, is part of how you help a religion to thrive and continue into the future. Um, so they did this. Sometimes they had to do it in secret, depending on where they were living and whether that community was supportive of Judaism or not. Um, but you can even hold religious services in someone's living room or in a basement. It doesn't take you don't have to be in a synagogue to do it. So it was a way for them to continue and embed traditions into their weekly lives so that their religion survived. Um, their services are called Shabbat. Another thing the Jewish people did is uh, establish some um, items that they wear to help them feel connected to their faith. This helped their religion to survive. So a talit is a prayer shawl. So it looks like this or it can just look like this. And this little round hat that you often see on a Jewish man's head is called a yarmulke. This is the word yarmulke, and I know it's not spelled anything like it sounds, but that's how you spell yarmulke. Um, so Jewish men will wear these to religious ceremonies, such as marriage um, ceremonies. They'll wear them to weekly Shabbat. Um, it's an idea sort of to keep, to keep them humble um, in the face of God. Um, we talked about already the fact that Jewish leaders are called rabbis, and so this is just another element that helps to maintain their faith. Another way that many religions maintain uh, a connection to their people is by establishing yearly traditions that people in the religion can look forward to. I'm sure many of you who are Christians look forward to Christmas and Easter every year. Those are two 
holidays that are celebrated in the Christian religion. And we studied a few weeks ago Diwali and how that is um, a religious tradition that is carried on by people in India. And so many different religions have, pretty much all religions have special holidays that they celebrate. And again, it helps the people feel connected to their faith. So the Jewish people were some of the first to establish these holidays. Um, they look forward to these celebrations. It connects them to um, their faith. So some of them are, are um, Rosh Hashanah. They celebrate Hanukkah, as we've talked about before. And then there are other Jewish holidays as well. Okay, so here's a little more about Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah is the Jewish New Year. Um, on this day, Jewish people blow a ram's horn sometimes. They eat sweet challa bread, which is bread with honey and apples. These sweet foods are supposed to bring you a sweet year. Um, they would attend synagogue services and light candles on this day as well. Another important Jewish holiday is Yom Kippur. This is called the Day of Atonement. Um, it's a day where they try to make up for the sins they have, com have committed over the past year. So this is more of a serious holiday. Um, Jewish people fast on Yom Kippur often, which means they don't eat for the entire day. Um, they also restrict their activities. Mostly they just go to synagogue for a service. Sometimes they choose to wear white as a sign of purity and uh, commitment they're making to try not to sin in the next year. Another way that the Jewish people have been able to maintain their faith is just through a willingness to change. So if you are too set in the ways of um, how you practice your religion, um, sometimes it can make it difficult if you encounter a situation where that set practice is no longer possible. And this happened to the Jewish people many times over history, where they would come into contact with a leader or a country that was not supportive of their faith, and so they would have to go into hiding and do it secretly. So if you're not willing to adapt and change your practice a bit according to the circumstances you're in, then it makes it really hard to practice your faith, and that often leads to a religion dying out or going away. Um, so the Jewish people were always flexible and able to adapt their practice and their um, rituals to fit whatever situation they were in, which helped to make their religion survive. Um, in doing this, though, it has caused the, the Jewish faith to break into different denominations. But this is also common in many other religions, too. Christianity, for example, has broken into many denominations, such as Catholicism, um, Protestantism, and you know, other uh, denominations. So it's a pretty common practice. In um, Judaism, there are Orthodox Jews, which are usually the most strict practicing uh, Jewish people who stick mostly to the ancient ways of doing things. Then there are conservative Jewish communities, which are sort of in the middle. And then reform Jews who are the most open-minded and open to changing practices over time. This is a picture of people who would be Orthodox Jews. So sticking more to traditional dress, um, wearing black and white, wearing those hats, and then those signature curls down the sides of their faces for men is sort of a hallmark of Orthodox Jews. Okay, so that is the conclusion of our unit on Judaism. Um, make sure that you're looking at your study guide because it's very similar to the test. Make sure you are practicing and posting a quizzes for you to go through so that you can practice what you learned about Judaism so you are prepared um, to take the test either on Wednesday if you um, are at the beginning of the alphabet or Thursday if you're at the end of the alphabet.